Hello and welcome back to JRDM. This week we're looking at tripods, which is one of these by the way. It's an essential piece of equipment for anyone who uses a camera. It gives you height clearance and steady shots. But the market's littered with so many, how would you know which one's right for you? And that is why today we are looking at the AT25 from Victive. We'll dive into the details in a bit, but first let's unbox the thing. On the front you've got a nice little picture of the tripod and the uh, name of the company, Victiv, or Victiv Stativ. I'm not sure which one is correct, but for now I'm going to go with Victiv. Enjoy life more. I do hope so. And uh, looking at the other side, so it looks like they've got a office in the UK and uh, in Germany as well, Frankfurt. That's quite cool. Uh, made in China obviously and on the other side you've got a picture of the tripod in its collapsed form which uh, it looks really compact what well, you'll see when we open up the box and on the other side so you've got foldable simple operation personal life series and maximum stability what more could you want from a tripod and that's it i'm afraid a pretty simple looking box so let's just open this thing up so to record this unboxing experience i'm using my main camera the 4k canon 90d but if you look above I have a Sony camcorder that's recording a bird's eye view, so you can join in with the action. And back to me. Okay, let's open this thing up. Already sliced this open. Oh, the packaging's already starting to fall apart. Oh, okay, I did not actually know this. It comes with a nice little handy carry case. Look at that. Let's uh, put that off to one side. That feels like a really good quality carry case and um, no initial rips I'm not the strongest person in the world but obviously some power to me and uh, no seems to be holding up quite nicely including the stitching around the zip area which you know I'm genuinely surprised by a brand I've never heard of delivering this level of quality I mean I haven't looked at the tripod yet. it could be dog poop but uh, we'll see okay first things first of course there is a, a little user manual which tells you oh it's a user manual to show you the different configuration settings for the tripod and how to get it in monopod mode okay that's uh, quite useful we'll put that to one side there is a bag of parts it looks like there's uh, some rubber feet in here Maybe an extension pole type thing. A couple of uh, hex uh, Allen keys and another little bolt. I have no idea. And let's remove the carry case. I'm going to put that on the side over here. That is the tripod. First impressions, there is a nice little bit of weight to it. I know I said it being 1.8 kg and being quite light is good. No, I mean as in quality wise, it feels quite sturdy. That's metal legs all around, including the center leg. So three little tripod legs uh, and it comes attached with its uh, base plate, I believe. Uh, I'm guessing the attachment that goes on the camera is inside the bag somewhere. And then this tripod I actually chose because it has a little ball bearing type head on here, which I'll come back to later. But um, let's open this thing up, okay? Nice little metal clank gear type mechanisms over here, which means that the f those legs are not going anywhere. Looking at the legs, before you put the rubber feet on, you've got quite a pointy metal stud on the bottom of each leg. You've also got four little latches that open up so you can extend the tripod. Four is quite, oh okay, I was going to say excessive, but obviously if you want to reach 195 centimeters or 205, you're going to need this much length. And in order for it to be compact, it's gonna need four latches. Okay, that's on each leg. It's also got a little orange 
spray painted latch mechanism at the top so you can um, hinge it into different positions. I believe it goes all the way down to being almost flat, which I can actually show you right now. These latches are a little bit sticky, but I don't know if that's just because it's new out of the packaging or maybe with a bit of wear and tear, it'll be a bit easier. I'm not sure, but I can only tell after I've used it for a while. Now that is a unique stance I've seen for any tripod and I've seen tens in my lifetime. Um, but no, this looks like it could be useful for landscape or wildlife photography. You know, you want something low to the horizon and just out of view for from animals or birds. This looks like it's going to be one of the sturdiest things you can have outside in the field. And then all you'd have to do to get it back into its compact carry away mode is to unlatch and then let it simply fold up and that the latches are already becoming easier to use and that is it like it's the size of my forearm that's that is really cool I like that but um, that's not why I bought this tripod what stood out to me is the ball bearing type head that this has got. This is very different from the tripod head I'm using right now. That's got a little handle to it, you unscrew it and it's up and down, left or right. This on the other hand is a bit more general and I can show you that with this b-roll that I shot or I will shoot but obviously you're going to see it in the edit. The movement is a lot more smooth when it comes to a ball bearing and you can adjust how tight the ball bearing is in its housing so that you can get a smoother or faster motion. The ball bearing housing itself sits on top of a 360 degree turning little mechanism that also ensures the smoothest of movements. This I believe is going to show some improvement over the current analog way I pan across on my traditional tripod. Instead of my hand being the stabilizer when I'm panning left and right you'll be able to see a much smoother motion when you know you gradually turn on a ball bearing mechanism like this. The attachment plate for the camera base plate has a nice little rotatory screw that screws in and tightens around the base plate and there's a very handy level in the actual knob itself. On the ball bearing head you do have markings indicating 180 degrees in either direction of the mechanism swivel action and you've also got the logo Vic2 on top of it. Right there's only so much tripod I can review on top of a table so let's clear some space and see how high this thing really goes. Right we've cleared some space in the studio but due to the tripod's height I, you might not be able to see my face and screen. You can decide if that's a good thing or not. So we've got the tripod here and it's a very basic position. This is it with all its leg extensions collapsed and no further extension on. I'm gonna call this the neck bit of the tripod. So first of all, we'll open up the first section of the legs and see where that takes us to. Okay, for reference, I am six foot, though this comes up to around halfway point. Then we have the second set and that brings it up to uh, just about to my diaphragm. Then we've got the third set of leg extensions which brings it to just about my collarbone. And this is the last set of leg extensions, the fourth one. And I believe this should take it up to at least my face height. Note that's right at my eye level. So that itself is already taller than my current tripod. But we can obviously do better than this. So let's see how high this actually goes. And if you remember back to the start of the unboxing, there was this little bag in it. And in it is a little extension for the head of the tripod. So let's fix that in after reading the manual, of course. So to fit this little neck extension, you will have to unscrew the top ball bearing housing, which is reassuringly metal, from the base head of the tripod. Then you'd have to lift this entire segment out with the base plate. And then inside your bag, you will also find a little screw a little bit weird 
I don't know if you can see, I'm gonna to have to do it like the makeup artist. And once you screw the smaller end of the bolt into the smaller end of the neck extension, you can screw that into the top of the tripod's neck and that should fit ever so snugly. And now you can place the base plate back on top, screw that in firmly and then literally top it off with your ball bearing housing and that adds an extra 15 centimeters or so, that's an approximation by the way, uh, onto the top of your tripod. But we can go even higher than this. We are getting awfully close to the top of the studio, well not really but you know what I mean. So if you unscrew this top rotatory dial on the neck of the tripod you have another 30 maybe 25 centimeters then there's also another rotatory dial at the bottom if you just push it all the way in that gives you an extra two or three centimeters and now this is in its highest form of 195 centimeters in tripod mode but from reading the manual we have another 10 centimeters where we can add on to this but it involves removing a leg so let's do a little bit of tripod surgery and uh, amputate this leg for that you'll have to locate the only leg on this tripod that has a rotatory dial on it. The other two just have the latches and are firmly and permanently attached to the tripod. The one with the rotatory dial, if you start unscrewing it in a clockwise direction, which is quite weird, I thought anti-clockwise would be to unscrew something, but here we go, we've got the leg off. What you then do is unscrew the bottom rotary dial on the neck of the tripod. Once that's fully unscrewed, you just unscrew on the underside of the neck the hook that you use to put weights on or dangle wires. I do both. And it should come out like this. Once that's done, you can pop your little monopod onto the base of the tripod. And there you have it. Once you fold the legs of the tripod in, it is now in monopod mode and that is a whopping 205 centimeters of height clearance in one tripod that is just ridiculous and to see how easily all of this packs away and there you have it the tripod in its native form and there it is that's the unboxing of the victive at25 tripod slash monopod I think this is going to be a great addition to my kit. I especially can't wait to produce smooth panning shots with this ball mechanism at the top. In fact, why don't I end this video off with a little b-roll of me using this tripod in all its configurations and an example of the smoothness that can be achieved by using this equipment. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I'm always buying new equipment and pieces of kit just so I can take my filmmaking to the next level. So there's more of these unboxing and review videos to come, so make sure you stay subscribed. I also upload my cinematic shots onto my Instagram and TikTok, so you can find the links for those in the description below. And most importantly, please leave a comment below because I wanna know what you want to see on this channel. Thanks for watching.